Yeah, hi everybody. Good morning. Uh, I'm Samir Kapadia, and uh, I'm here with uh, Saibal Khar as the co-moderator. Uh, we have uh, uh, the wonderful uh, case already scheduled from uh, Bonn, Germany, with uh, our uh, very esteemed friends and colleagues, uh, Dr. Uh, Nickening, George Nickening, and Eberhard Grube with uh, Sebastian Zimmer. And uh, we have an outstanding panel of uh, uh, experts, Rebecca Hahn, uh, Jack Tan, Lars Sundergaard, Shen Shuk Kubo, and uh, uh, Yun Kang. Uh, Eberhard and uh, George, uh, the floor is yours. So please uh, go ahead. Uh, so I, it's great. Eberhard, this is very, yeah, Saibad, very good to hear you. And uh, thanks for having us. Very yes. beautiful and esteemed panel. We have an interesting case. Uh, the team here, I don't think we need to really introduce them. Georg, uh, everybody knows, and uh, Sebastian Zimmer in the back. And we have <clears throat> a very, very esteemed Japanese colleague who has joined us for many, for many months, actually years. Um, and he has been uh, with us uh, and, and very instrumental in bringing things forward here. So <clears throat> it's a real pleasure to have him on the team today. And uh, the nurses, and of course, uh, our echocardiographist, cardiologist, echocardiographist, uh, <laughs> Dr. Weber, who, as we all know, is very important for this procedure. And um, I think, George, we can, uh, we can, uh, or you want to have any other words? No, 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 I'm fine. Uh, welcome also from my side, Saibal Samir, and to all in the faculty. And I think we can start right away with a case presentation. I guess this will be done by Marcel. Yes. Marcel, yeah. Hello. Um, may I present the case? We have uh, a 83-year-old female patient with symptomatic severe functional MR, and we plan an edge-to-edge -edge therapy with a mitraclip G4. Uh, she has intermediate surgical risk with a STS score of 3.3% uh, and a Euroscore 2 of 5.9%. Um, she has had breast cancer in 2008 and has no CIED. Next slide, please. So hypertension is her risk factor beside her age of 83 uh, years. And she's presenting in severe dyspnea with NYHA class 3. Next slide, please. This is now interesting. It's uh, imaging data of this patient. She has reduced left ventricular ejection fraction with 46%. And she has a severe functional MR with a, a Wiener contractor of almost 8 millimeter, an Eero of uh, 0.5 square centimeters, and a, a PISA of almost 10 millimeters. Um, next slide, please. There you can imagine the uh, TOE data. And we have even a small gap of 2 millimeters, and we have severe tenting, as you can see on the right hand images. Next slide. So we want to treat this patient with severe functional MR with the MitraClip G4 system. And now I come to the last slide and the learning points. Uh, we plan edge to edge with the G4 system because of independent grasping. We have a difficult anatomy due to the cooptation gap of almost t uh, two millimeters and severe tenting. Second point is the clip choice, we have four sizes available. And the third and last point is the change of the MV gradient um, after TMVR. We start with a gradient, uh, with a mean gradient of two millimeters of mercury. Thank you very much. So, um, Saibal and, uh, and Samir, uh, I know that uh, Georg will, will obviously uh, go ahead with the team here. Um, there are a couple of questions that we would like maybe to point out and ask you. Um, you know, looking at the at the echocardiogram, you have four choices. Um, here we can see there's tethering. There's a relatively large mitral valve. What would be your choice of uh, of clip given the G4 situation? Uh, my, I will ask Saibal too, but my personal choice in this situation is. Uh, many times to use a XTW, uh, even though, you know, a lot of people say that the NT is probably better for the functional MR, but I think that uh, this kind of uh, wide MR 
uh, the XTW does a good job. And uh, the tethering is an issue, so you can potentially have some gradient, but uh, I think this is what I would have suggested, but let's see what Cybel says and uh, find other we panel members. And well, we do. tend to use the NTW for functionals. We start usually with NTW for functionals and XTs we leave for degenerative. Unless yeah. there are a lot of defects. And I think the gap is not so bad. It's two millimeters. So NTW, and especially with the independent grippers, you can actually get a lot of defects. So mm -hmm. our starting point would be NTW. And actually in the G4 registry, NTW was the hard, largest uh, number of clips used with NTW. And XTW was DN. So that's our first choice. Good deal. Okay. So, but the first question, of course, would be, uh, what, what would be the treat, uh, the treatment anyway? Would we go for, I mean, it, it's without doubt that the patient should have dedicated treatment for, for the severe mitral regurgitation. And the question is, of course, should she undergo or should she have undergone surgery, open heart surgery, or is she a candidate just for a TMVR or even a replacement? Uh, these are also questions we could discuss. Uh, I have a clear opinion. I think the, she has no indication whatsoever for open heart surgery, but there may be other, other opinions in, in, in the panel or from you guys. Well, Anybody from the panel who want to send her to surgery? I mean, according to the Even guidelines, our... indication for surgery. I mean, it's a standalone mitral intervention here, so for functional mitral regurgitation. So that's off uh, the table. She's also an elderly lady, eighty-three years of age. So, so and she had chest radiation in the past. I think I heard. So surgery is also right. a high risk. Yeah. Uh, I didn't. I didn't uh, hear about uh, the ECG. Was she a candidate for CRT potentially? No, no, she I has no left so. brand, uh, branch no, block. No, no. She has a oh. normal QRS. So, with. Just so that's true of her um, medical treatment and uh, transcatheter air stretch repairs, I see. If you look at the echocardiogram, you can very nicely see on the right side, there's a little coaptation gap. Just for discussion point. Yeah, uh, we only see the hemodynamics. Maybe we can see the e echo. Echo can we see the echo now? Yeah, okay. So here you can see on the on the right side of the screen, you can see there's a lack of coaptation, which obviously speaks for the fact that, uh, you know, that there's an annulus and you have, you have, uh, you know, the gap in between there. You know, what do you, what do you think? Suppose that we had this, would a ring treatment be an annulo, an annuloplasty be of some option here? I think yeah, I mean, this is a, that's a good point. Uh, Millipi, some sort of ring therapy. I believe that if you have annular dilatation and you don't have an eccentric MR, yeah. uh, this candidate could be considered for at least an hour's place. We would have studied it in, in the in the Millipi trial. Yes. Right. But, yeah, uh, my my uh, I have the, uh, concerns because we have a severe or close to severe tethering, mm -hmm. and he's uh, Marcel is right now measuring the okay. tenting tenting distance, which is somewhere between ten and fifteen millimeters right now, thirteen. Yes. Could be still so a good candidate. Yeah, yeah but uh, it is not a it is not an ideal candidate for a direct annuloplasty. I would say. Can I, mean, I can I just uh, make a quick comment uh, coming back to the last point because uh, looking at this gap, I think it's a great candidate with all this indication for a percutaneous approach. Uh, but my heart failure chaps always ask us to try at least three to six months of more aggressive heart failure therapy, including using uh, entresto and wait and see for a while and see whether the gap narrows. Um, what what do you guys think? Uh, do you always, uh, for this type of patients, wait at least three to six months? I mean, this patient, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, somebody just mentioned there are two alternatives, me medication on one hand and then the dedicated catheter-based treatment on the other hand. I think they're complementary. They should go along. And usually a patient uh, with FMR should have at least three months. 
to six months of stable therapy, including all the medication mentioned in the guidelines like beta blockers or, or an ARNI and then spironolactone and, and, and diuretic treatment. I, I totally agree with you. And But she is, uh, she is on that medication already uh, for months. And as we all know, this FMR has not been has not been appeared just a few weeks ago. She's 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 under this system, under this symptoms for for months and years, yes, despite treatment. The patient so, has a special history. Uh, Twelve months ago, we had her already on a medication and wanted to uh, treat her mitral, but she refused and she wanted to wait. And now she come came back one month ago and said, "I, I want this therapy because it's not uh, good enough with the medication." So we planned her for t for today. Could I come um, back to Samir's point? Uh, you know, you you know, the, you were suggesting the the X. Uh, you know, given the tethering, um, Samir, what would make you believe that this would be a uh, a good case for the uh, for the for the uh, for the uh, for the, uh, you know, for the X? The, right. So the what the differences are? What is the NT and XT? What are the main differences? Is that how much? of the posterior, so posterior leaflet is long in this patient. So that right. is a positive thing. And so if you put the uh, XT clip, you will move the coaptation because you will catch more of the posterior leaflet in uh, ratio wise compared to the anterior leaflet. So the coaptation will move a little bit posteriorly. So I would love to see a 3D image to see if there are any clefts or anything like that that would change my mind. But otherwise, if you move the coaptation posteriorly, you will have a better chance of just putting one clip and uh, correcting the problem if it is not a very broad uh, mitral regurgitation. So a 3D picture or putting color on this picture would be very helpful. Yes, I mean, we have, uh, have 3D. I hope you can you can see it also. Uh, you We've can always see been... The, the we have so. We've always been more concerned about um, really the construction of the uh, of the XT versus the NT. So as you know, there are two extra rows of frictional elements uh, on the XT, and and uh, the the stress on the leaflets at the top of the of those clip arms is um, is different, and the actual grasping strength is only at the bottom of your clip, and so there's always a potential of greater injury to a functional valve with the XT um, since, uh, again, you know, you're not going to have the same uh, gripping strength as at the bottom for um, frictional elements. And so we've always mm -hmm. kind of thought about that. And the more tethered the leaflet, the more we worry about actual injury to uh, the valve. And so we typically will go with the NTW. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Becky, uh, concerned about yeah. Go, no, no, no. Please go ahead, um, about, Becky. Would you be concerned about the uh, engage, the the entanglement of the cordae and the, with the XT? Not in the middle. No, no, no not in the middle. Right down the middle. Yeah. If you have anything yeah. off to the side, then uh, you know anything uh, on the commissures. Then I think most of us would worry a little bit more about XT. Yeah, but so this one I think you'll grab down the middle. Yeah, let's uh, let's uh, let's Stop talk working. for a second what we have done so far. I mean, not not a lot. We just did the transvenous puncture, went transceptor. We didn't do this live because it's not very spectacular. Um, as most of you know, but it's maybe important also for our Asian friends. Uh, we need to go posterior and we need to be sure that we have a distance between the puncture height in can the interceptum and, the, the, and the, the angles of four centimeters. Yes, please. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Can we go live? This, echo? This, this, we are seeing this echo and not seeing the uh, your uh, live your, echo. No, we need to see that little thing because we are seeing live echo. And on this side, we see the what you're talking and showing the transeptal. We don't see it. Yeah, transeptal has been done already. This is a now, wire. Now good. Now good. Yeah. Yeah. This is a wire in 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 the fossa, and maybe we can share. We why don't why wasting time with this? We can go live, I think, right away and show you where we punctured and because we have the system inserted already as you have seen probably yes. and there there is a clip uh, sitting in the in the left atrium that's all we did so far and maybe um, we can try to navigate the system now to the 
to the to the mitral and try to do something about this mitral regurgitation. Can what you also? The, what did yeah, you use? Uh, we used an NTW, uh, or we are going to use an NT, NTW. Uh, I, I'm not sure whether it is a smart choice. Um, to be honest with you, uh, I came more or less in the room and the NTW was almost ready to go, and therefore we're using the NTW. I think it's a good I choice. Uh, right now, it's a good choice, <laughs> and um, a, I also it's a safe think... Choice. The, yeah. the yeah I think Becky's point is also well taken on the other hand um, I haven't seen too much tears in, in clinical <laughs> yeah, practice Every, everybody is talking about this but it's a real rare rare finding I agree with you so and, and by the way by, by the way you know he was very modest saying that he came into the room and he you know it was his choice by the way <laughs> so, so <laughs> let's go Everhard, I'm sure yeah. clip was not your choice because you think it's a band-aid. Uh, I was waiting. I was waiting for that, and I was actually preparing to give an answer. But you know, because you know, I'm here in my in my in my hometown. I, I'm not discussing this with you. I can discuss this with you <laughs> off air. But no, I I do. I mean, you know, I I don't think it's a it's a permanent. But fear for. For FMR, I think it's uh, and uh, the data speak for themselves. So it's a nice band-aid, right? I, I did, yeah, it's a very nice band-aid. It, it stays longer. Whether it resolves the problem, you know, you put a band-aid on and it helps. But at the end of the day, the body has to okay. has to do the real healing. <clears throat> so she is going to open the 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 clip. Uh, you can witness this on 3D. So what we have to do right now is uh, is twofold. We have to orientate the clip in the, in, in the valve. So uh, if everybody agrees on, we're going to go for a central grasping uh, in this anatomy. And therefore, I'm trying to put it on 12 o'clock. So the order should be on 6 o'clock. We are upside down. Probably some of you are used to the surgical view. Uh, this is the cardiologist, a poor man's view. So the order is down at six o'clock. So not that you worry about this. Um, as a question, this you know? seems to be okay. And and let me just uh, mm -hmm. add one other thing. We have independent grasping, so yeah. we should we should try. Uh, we should look at the grippers. Which gripper is which one? And that's what Asushi is doing right now. And usually you can see it nicely also on 3D. Can I? There can you can I see. Can this is the anterior you? one. And the other one is posterior. There you can see the posterior one. Mm. So you have independent gripping. You know, it's, it's your choice to first get the posterior, uh, Georg. Friday. No. We usually do the simultaneous. Yeah. Usually you do what? Simultaneously. We would, we would always yeah. try simultaneous and then right. Absolutely. use the independent gripper function for optimization. Right. And don't close it too early. Yeah. May I say something? Sure. I think the direction is, uh, you come very far from medial, so it could be that the trajectory is not the I best. I think that I'm coming from two media. Can I show you in 3D again? Uh, no. No? Okay. If you show uh, the I see, one I see your point. I see your point. I'm trying to correct it. Uh, okay. Uh, let's go dive into the ventricle. And let's do for educational reasons the 3D again. Yes. Because we want to check orientation. Sometimes uh, the the clip rotates while while diving into the ventricle. You can follow this on fluoroscopy. That's the easiest way. It's but let's still 12 o'clock. But let's do it on echo for a second. And what we could do, we could continue to do this procedure here because. Uh, Marcel has these beautiful images right now. What you can see on the lower left corner, you can see the, the LVOT view. Um, maybe it the... Covered, it is covered by your uh, other window, you know? Yeah. So, okay. ah. Mach das. Can, you, can you close the... Uh, your... Now, now you should be able to see it. Can you see it now? Yeah, no, you can't. See. 
They have no, no, green. I, I can see it. It has you, shown the the fluoro is coming on it. Fluoro and your picture both can be. Yes. We are not it. doing fluoro. Yeah. Now? Yes. Now we can see everything. This is better. So, so what we see here is we have both leaflets on the on the clip. Maybe the posterior one not so nice as we would expect, as we would love to have it. Now the anterior is gone. I think there is a little delay or something because we are seeing the clip in the LA right now. Now it's both on. No, 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 no. Actually, you guys can just pin the video in the smaller box. Uh, the live we, we wait for you. So what what do you yeah, yeah. could you describe what you are seeing right now? You should now, see. Now we can see. Uh, now we can see that the live. This is good. Okay, okay. Uh, now we have both. both I'm not sure with the posterior uh, posterior right now. I don't think it's posterior really is on. No, no, it's back on. No. Thank you. Uh, okay, let's close both mm. and close the clip uh, carefully. Not not that much of posterior went in, is it? No, no the posterior, the posterior is, is not Sorry. in. No. I'm off. So we'll open it again and we leave the anterior one down and just open the posterior one. Yeah. Is the orientation turned a little bit? It looks that yeah. way. Yeah, but you can see also on the on the on the right picture it looks to me it looks looks Very okay nice. now so, uh, go, go down yeah. with the gripper it's perpendicular okay. to the quotation line now and now we, we lost the anterior yeah. um go yeah open the anterior one very good can you cup the clip a little bit i think you should I close the clip to 120 then you'll get some yeah then you won't lose the leaflet it's, it's like 180 degrees. degrees open yeah, close, yeah, close it yeah. a bit, the clip. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's better. And then counterclockwise and get the... And put it on. Can, can I see the, uh, the right... Uh, can you yeah. get rid of, of, of gain a bit on the yes. right side? Okay, okay, I understand. Okay, okay like this. Actually, now I'm it's on again. It's now closed. That's good. Yes. Anti is on. Actually, I'm quite new to the G4 system. Usually, for such a central graphs, I just mm -hmm. regrasp both simultaneously again without this independent maneuver. Is, is this really very safe? This, this is very. It, this is very, very safe. safe because this so-called Tarzan maneuver as it was called, or I think from the competitor, you have only a bit of exertion on both sides. Yes. You cannot pull like 10 millimeters from the yes. posterior to the anterior one. It is just a matter of millimeters. And, and therefore, I think it's not unsafe. I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you that there's, there's this thing that they thought that you can swing and bring it right over. It doesn't happen. Yeah, you cannot yeah. bring it over. Yes, and so I think you've got a beautiful anterior leaflet grasp. You got yeah. a re reasonable posterior grasp, and um, maybe it's let's, okay. Yeah, let's go to two D and uh, then we see nice color and check the result. Yeah, you have nice particular? posterior insertion, nice anterior leaflet insertion. Yeah, I think the leaflet insertion appear good. Okay. Becky, you agree? Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, sometimes yeah, Becky, we'll Becky, uh, Becky wants MPR and all that shit. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, we'll, <laughs> we'll usually do live NPR to do the whole the whole thing so that you can make sure your trajectory is the same and you see everything. But but that was beautiful imaging. So. Yeah. But we, you, still, we still have... You never said that to me, Becky. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering about that too. First of all, can you can you go can you show us the gradient for a second? Yes, of course. Because there is some gradient already. Um, George, I mean, there you was close the clip full. Is it fully closed the clip? Or? Yeah, 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 it is. So there is no significant. The uh, other point that is very important that this is a very good case to show that this is one year after. A uh, patient didn't want therapy for one year. And the new data, as you saw, the three-year data just co just came out a few days ago, oh, which shows that even in a delayed patient, if you treat them 
they actually almost react in the same way as the, as though they treated early. So even okay. though you delayed the treatment by one year, uh, the Farber. patient will still benefit from this therapy. So how That's much was the... the uh, where, where's the color coming from? We have a medial jet. Uh, yeah, I think it's a medial jet is a little bit bigger. I think I'm, I'm, we, are, we are not satisfied with this uh, so far. What was, what was the gradient? I'm sorry, we couldn't see the... 4.6. 4.6. The baseline gradient, gradient was 2. Yeah, so it, it is all, all in the end diastole. There was not much gradient. So this didn't look like a lot of... Uh, and do you have the hemodynamics still, the V waves? Yes, we do. Uh, it's cut by almost 50%, right? It yeah, was like 70 or something. 65 was at the V wave and now 44. So still there. And, yeah. and, and so that the, actually, the, the grass looks pressure? very good, but I, I felt it was not exactly 12, 6 o'clock. Maybe it was not as perpendicular right in the middle. Yeah, I yeah. can show it to you. We have uh, the video in the... No, no, we don't need to see the video. No? Okay. Um, Saiba, you, what, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're grasping and then you look at to, the... Uh, to 3D. Yes. Whether you, you know, the clip's perpendicular to the cartation line before you close, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. After uh, I grasp so the leaflets, I actually go 3D and make sure it's, it's uh, really perpendicular before I close the clip. Right, right. So, so can I just ask you, Saib, and also George, do you think this can you, can you independent the, field grippers here are closing could cause the, the jet, the regurg? Well, well, what uh, was the question again, Lars? Can you repeat that question? I mean, you, you closed, you, you have independent gripping here oh. in this case. Mm -hmm. So oh, you, yes. you could potentially have some twisting on the system. Twist. Yes. So we, we can, you, you can do the 3D, you open it up to 120 and you can look at whether they're yeah. spin rolling. That's a good point. That's what we're doing right. right now. The clip yeah. is open, but the grippers are still down. Yes. So we can have a look at the orientation. Yeah, that's half a good past point. Half past 12, I think. Pardon me? Uh, half past 12. So half past orientation. 12. Yeah. That's it's slightly, that. in my terms, you know, of course, we are used to seeing it upside down. So I would say that uh, in this... It's, yeah, it needs to be rotated a little, a little bit. bit. Your handle, mm. so it will counterclock this one. Cl clockwise yeah. a little bit. So let's, let's, we have time. Let's open both grippers. Both. Huh? Yeah, both. And also, uh, uh, your, I missed, I think you should start a little bit medial, a little bit more medial. But if you just right? clock it, it will get it, I think. Yeah. Show me just it, 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 the right side. Less gain. Less gain. Okay, so go to explain for a second. Or MPR, if, as you wish. Okay, so I also agree that we should go a bit more to the medial side. That's what I'm doing right now. Yeah. System is a bit more a notch more on the medial side. I think trajectory, if you look on the commissural side, it's, it's, it's looking fine, lo looking okay. Yes. And in the LVRT, we also see that it looks nice. And we can put both grippers down. Mm -hmm. Down. And close it again. Okay. I would have do, th see at this point, I usually do 3D and check that they uh, they're okay. I uh, just checked the orientation just a second yeah. ago. You may have missed it. No, that's uh, fine. That's fine. Yeah, I know that. Okay. That's okay. This is very nice. The the posterior and anterior are nicely in. Yeah. yeah it looks, it looks better. Looks much better. Yeah. So look again for color. Uh -huh. What is the blood pressure, by the way? Actually, the MR is the MR reduction is definitely better with this one by color. Yes, the medial yeah, jet has become smaller, it. right? Yeah. yeah. Because the yeah. jet was slightly more medial than central. Yeah. I think this is a better position. We have now, George, we have... monitoring the LP pressure. LA yes, pressure. We, have, we, we used usually to have, like to, Georg, always look at LA pressure. To me, the LA pressure reduction and change with the grasp is very important. 
Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure whether I agree, but uh, in any event, we have the LE pressure on board and we had before we had a V wave of 66 between 65 and 70. And right now we have a V wave. I don't know whether we should be able to show it to you. We have a V wave of 35, 34. So, so it's, a, we it's cut a significant it. reduction. So yeah. we cut it by half. Um, yeah. And now we have to somehow look at the at the gradient for a second. It was around a four point zero. So blood pressure is one hundred and forty. Yes. Okay. So, so, so down down four here. Yeah. For this system, you do look at the area pressure life as a marker for success. Do you? Uh, very much. I look yeah. at the change of V wave and the and the absolute reduction during the just instantaneously after grasping. Not continuously, because what happens is, is clip, blood pressure will go up, LA pressure goes up again. The corollary, so the, for change. Us, the corollary on the echo would be the uh, return pulmonary of systolic veins. flow in the pulmonary veins. Yes, and that's yeah. been shown in two different studies, uh, whether or not you can just change it or whether actually you have systolic dominance. Yes. Uh, either one has been shown to have improved uh, one and two year outcomes. Yeah. Uh, survival. <laughs> So, so, I, so right, my guess is that you, you've got your systolic flow back because this looks very good. Yeah, I think uh, right now we have to reason about uh, what to be done, what has to be done. Uh, we have a gradient close to five. We have a, a blood pressure, a systemic blood pressure of 140 over 70. Heart rate is is low, is somewhere around four, 50, 45 to 50. And I mean, we have still residual MR. Um, I don't think the, it's that bad. The, yeah. the jet doesn't go very, it's a low velocity jet. You see, it's a red signal. Most. Of, I think this is a great result. Becky, I mean, uh, you, you, always, Becky you, you are always very critical and very cruel. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, what's your judgment? We would normally um, look at the EROA um, by 3D. We planimeter the, reg the regurgitant orifices. And if it's under 20, um, certainly under 20, we would say we're, we're done because um, mm -hmm. typically that you know, will translate into uh, mild, at most mild to moderate. Uh, so we, we, yeah, so we will ask Marcel to do this right yes. now. That be other and then in, in addition, uh, Georg, if you, uh, if you, if the patient can now tolerate more medication and get the blood pressure down, or even if you can bring it down to a, you know, what you would, what you would normally want, which is 120 or even 110, then my guess is the MR will look a lot better as well. Yes. Yeah. I agree. True. True. So uh, do you have a? Can you show us the pulmonary veins after you finish this? Uh, your, yeah. Sure. Uh, sure. Sure. Can we blood pressure mal 100, 110 bringen? So the vena, venas look extraordinarily small. Yes. yes. They're very small. I agree with you. But I, so, I like this, Rebecca, Becky, that you also look at. Um, but I look at I look at this uh, pressures and the pulmonary veins first. Yeah. The, are you measuring or are you veins. playing around? <laughs> Marcel. I'm just measuring. I just find the right image. It's it's Very so shy. comfortable. We are off the spot, <laughs> and now Marcel, yes. now the echocardiographer can start to sweat. <laughs> it's it's between Becky and Marcel now. Yeah. We can relax. But very insignificant, you know. Whatever it is, it is not uh, particularly large. So we not have some bad. spots, but they are uh, very very measure. small. As you can yeah. see here, yeah. it is, uh, and here it is a cross-sectional view of the mitral. Um, yeah. I agree. I think, I think is this small. is the biggest here. I can yeah. measure the the area. And then, yeah, be sure to hug the uh, color, no color line. Yeah, real close. So this is the vena contractor so by uh, 0 3D point one yeah. as a 3D euro. Yeah, 10 millimeters squared. And the other one is even smaller. I mean, Georg, this is, this is success. Yeah, yeah. We didn't we need to do the measurements. We could have just seen it. But Becky wants to do that. <laughs> we always do the measurements. Yeah, but not everybody oh, is so gifted God, as Becky. you are, Cyborg. So, so, so I think we 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 did we, we are going to t detach this one and then. Um, Let me see the pulmonary veins before you detach it. Can, I, I don't know what it was like pre, but can we show him the you? show him the pulmonary veins? Go uh, yeah. go on. 
I don't, what was it like before? Uh, I, I guess we haven't measured it. We haven't it kind of I'm rushed sorry. into the room. That, that's, that's a bit of a problem. <laughs> yeah, it's the, de it's the delta in those, in those studies. Yes, that, um, exactly. Associated with, yeah. Are so you that, always measuring it? Yeah, we yes. always do because, yeah. you know, particularly in a tough case, um, and we're on the borderline, we've got now, now 25 millimeters. But this is beautiful, by Oh, the that's way. beautiful. This is, this is it's systolic like, dominant. Yeah, yeah. systolic yeah. dominance is going to be very good outcomes. Yeah, but, this, um, this, 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 Dr. Grube's uh, pulmonary veins look like this. Yeah. <laughs> in Depends a tough on, case, if we're on the borderline. on what stage, right? If yeah. we're on the borderline, and the, but the systolic dominance has returned, mm -hmm. And sometimes yeah. we stop. Yeah, that's nice. great. I wish we had done a show a pre and post, but it's definitely systolic dominance is a very good sign. Very good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Clip is off. Smoke is in the air. Yeah, it's beautiful. Dr. Grube, what do you think about this palliative uh, band aid? <laughs> So let's check again. For a second. <laughs> I'm going to say this to you for the rest of my life. I know. He insulted me four I years know. ago. Four okay. years ago. It's about the same, right? Yes. Yes, and I think it's the same. All jets are uh, functional. So they are due to. But I think it's good. Dilatation. But they are very small, as, as you can see on the right hand uh, video. The vena contractor is just. I care two only about Becky's opinion, and <laughs> if she is okay, I'm fine too. Are you guys on on the next call together? Why are you so much? So you know, Becky is important, but can you, you know? show us the uh, LA pressure? Uh, yes, we can. Because now, once the clip can is out, you can probably see it better. Can we see um, hemodynamics again? What is the systolic blood pressure? It's 120, 100. And it's down. It's 100, 160. So one of the things is 120. Mm, 120. Is like, even though the LA pressure, the uh, V waves are uh, 30 or whatever, it starts from 20 up. So the LV and diastolic pressure is high. So if you gave a little bit of nitro this LA pressure is going to come down. So the V waves are important, but where it, what is the baseline is also important. So this is 10, 15 millimeter V wave. So this is excellent. I think uh, the outcome is outstanding. Okay, thank you so, so much. I want to ask yep. a theoretical question. If you, if you ever, if you had a ring, sort of ring therapy, right? Yep. Do you think adding a ring now to this would reduce the leakage even further, those two jets on the side. This is a or question I'm asking. The, or do the ring first and then put the clip, because then you would know where to put the clip, because the rings, if they are not completely uh, complete rings, millipede could be, but other things which are not complete. It may I mean, there are only two different. now at the moment. You have either cardio band, which I don't know where it is, and there's millipede, which is just started. So would you consider this as a therapy? Just to, I'm just to optimize the results of a flip therapy. Well, in theory, you could also do cardiac dimensions, right? Yeah, carry on too, because I I just had two compassionate cases after yeah. flip with carry on. So yes, mm. it, all those things are possible. So the carry on also does a, uh, you know, it is a, it is amazing that what you can achieve with this multiple treatment over time. So, yeah, over time. Yeah. So these are all different things that we are learning. But, uh, but I, I agree with you, uh, or one of you just mentioned that you should do it the other way around. You should start with the with the direct aneuploplasty. I know, Saiba, that that was not your question, but that's what I, at least I, w I would start. And then if there is still residual significant MR, then I would add a leaflet therapy and would try not to go the other way around. It has been shown that it also works the other way around, but I don't think that this is the optimal approach. You mean first the ring and then the clip? Yes. Uh, but in that patient, uh, uh, I think it would have been not an ideal approach to well, use if you look direct analog. But you, uh, but uh, you, George, you're contradicting yourself. When I asked you this question in the beginning, you said 
that because of the tenting, which was actually 13 millimeters, you were not in, you're not in favor of a raid. Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to agree with Georg on that one because, you know, when, when you look at that kind of functional disease, you know, we now know in our guidelines we have both atrial functional and ventricular functional. This is ventricular functional. And an, an annular ring is just not really the answer when the annulus is not massively dilated. And uh, in atrial functional, you've got dilatation of the annulus being the reason that the leaflets don't meet in the middle. And therefore, mm -hmm. the leaflets are flat. They don't have a lot of tenting. They just can't meet because the annulus is too big. That's a perfect case for an annual class. Yes, I agree with you, Becky. Well, Whereas this one, this one was very is different. This allowed to, is this allowed to disagree too? No, no, not today. Yeah, no, you can. You can. <laughs> no, no. I mean, you can use both, but I think that the leaflet device, this leaflet device uh, result is, is extraordinarily good. You know what the the thing that I that I thought I mean the tethering, you know, was there, but but basically, the you you could see there's co there was coaptation except except due to the tethering that you know the, the you had the the, the 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 end of the leaflets coming together, so if if you would apply a ring, um, then I would maybe think that you could approach those two. And you would be very happy if you got that coaptation, that amount of coaptation, um, you know, with the ring that you received, uh, that, that you uh, achieved here now with the clip. I'm not sure whether we know enough now about, you know, atrial and ventricular and what the appropriate uh, therapies uh, would be in the future. Maybe, maybe you're right, Becky. I don't know. But I mean, Just, for, uh, for, remember for, for, one thing. Yeah, go ahead. That you have done this in 30 minutes and extremely safe. So this is in an 84 year old patient. So you cannot underestimate the safety of this procedure. That's true. The safety of this procedure is so amazing uh, that uh, th this has to be put in, in equation when we talk about other therapies because they yeah. have to be in this kind of safety, which is I think unparalleled because all the people, even the people who are not very, very adept, do this fairly safely. Uh, they may not be able to get good result, but at least they are not, they are not going to have a tremendous uh, ill effect to the patient. Yeah, yeah, that's true. True, and the oh. ease of the, the ease, the simplicity of the procedure. I mean, still, um, Still, the the annuloplasty devices. Uh, I mean, besides cardiac dimension, which is which is also an easy procedure, but the other ones are more complex and uh, imaging demanding, especially the cardioband. And this also adds up in an 84 years old lady having her on the table for two or three hours. Uh, this, uh, instead of 30 minutes or 40 minutes. And therefore, right now, I would also opt more for a leaflet device, especially yeah. in this in this whole situation with the tethering and everything. I mean, let's so be honest. I want to ask you another controversial question. So you showed a procedure which is so safe. You showed it actually how efficient you are. And you have all these TMBR devices, and they all want to do single arm studies. You think that's correct? Or should you randomize it to a new standard of care? Would you consider this a standard of care now for functional MR? I mean, if, if uh, we all know the co-op data, and and as as far as I know, and most of the devices have have to run against against the the clip device, um, the valves. At least that's what I I know from the United States, and therefore I totally agree with you that the single arm uh, devices, at least once we want to know what is the effect on 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 the outcome of the patient, needs to be a randomized trial, but. Of course, the first step is 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 in feasibility trial. You need to know is the, is the product working properly at all at an acceptable safety. But this doesn't give you outcome data. I don't know whether this answers your question. But for well, example, yes, it does. If, if I, you go I, I really for, like this answer. Thank yeah, you very if much. You, yeah, if but, you go uh, for a, well, on the other side, if you want to argue the other way, you could potentially do the study where 
the clip is not an optimal solution. So let's see, this is a this is a good case for a clip in the sense that it was central, it was relatively short right. uh, breadth of the MR. If the whole coaptation was leaking, uh, if the uh, annulus was uh, somewhat calcified and some MAC was there, the size of the valve was not adequate, then you would say that this patient could be in a single arm study for the TMVR because uh, the clip is not a is not going to be an optimal solution for this. Patient. So, but but uh, Sami, the point is that you also mentioned in the equation in your own words. I'm like a lawyer that the safety and shortness of the procedure are also important. Of course. So you have to balance that. The submultiple results with the safety. That's why doing a randomized study, this data will come out. You might find out that, you know, it's equally safe for the more complications, you have better reduction. That's why I think randomizing patients against this therapy makes the most reasonable sense, yeah, unless yeah, the patient is completely content again. Yeah, you but we are talking this, about uh, two different, we are talking about two different populations. We have this population, which is eligible for, for the mitroclip. And there, I think, Cyber, you are absolutely right. Uh, there should be randomized trials comparing it to mitroclip. But then we have this also this very huge population of patients suffering from MR, and they are not they are not optimally eligible for for mitroclip because they are they they have a gradient from start. They have uh, calcification, whatever. All the patients Sami just uh, just mentioned, and there it is difficult to do a do a randomized trial against mitroclip. There there we have to go for a, for a single arm trial. I totally agree with this option. Too. I, 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 I don't agree. You can have a you, single, you, single arm, you, single arm in the study. You got it. But also, you, the, the study. Yes, sorry. Large. If you large, don't want large. to randomize it against edge to edge repair, you need to randomize this patient a bit against best medical treatment by itself. Otherwise, it's going to leave you as a class two B indication. In the guidelines. You will never That's have a right. strong recommendation for it. So you're saying that if they they are suboptimal for leaflet repair that group should still be randomized to medical therapy, right? Yeah. How, how would you otherwise place them in the guidelines? Yes, no, you're absolutely right too, because you have to take into the consideration the risk of TMBR. It has its own risks, including implantation, perivalvular leak, thrombosis. And so I agree with you. No, that, that I agree, that I agree, that if you are going to randomize these patients, you got to randomize with medical therapy. Right. Yeah. So that's what I'm yeah. saying. You, don't, you should not approve a new device based on a single arm. And that's the push that's going on right now, which is not correct. I want to make it very, very clear because I'm really upset about something that is going on right now. And Becky is keeping quiet about it. You mean, she, you mean with uh, what they're doing with no. Intrepid now? Yes, exactly. Yeah, I yeah. think... Uh, but, learning points everywhere so yeah yeah i mean i the reason why i'm being so um emotional about this is i was in the journey of mitroclip for coapt with samin and all of the people there 13 to, in 2013 and 14 when the fda laughed at us and rejected us and said you've got to do a randomized trial and so and we did it and we did an amazing study and so i think Everything should be held to the same standards. You can't have double standards. Now, Saibal, I agree with you. Becky, you're you not making that? any comments. I'm noticing you're keeping quiet. <laughs> you don't <laughs> want to say anything. <laughs> but reason, reason for the randomized trial in the first time also is the fact that we never had an, had a data to say that That's the heart failure true. patients treating mitral regurgitation improves anything. So this COAP yeah. trial is not just for the clip was very important, but also was very important to say that treating mitral regurgitation in heart failure patients reduced hospitalization and death. So this is a, a huge <laughs> learning. Now that has been solved. So some people, some could come out and say that, listen, we don't need that kind of data. So, but you are absolutely right. The safety is a very important piece. Yes, there's also have. other issues in the, in the, in the, in the mortality and coapt, what was important is there was a balance of the, there was very, uh, there was very few safety issues, which was of course not in the French trial. 
Maybe in France you shouldn't have microscopes done. That's I'm just sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful, Father. Simon. <laughs> I made a mistake. Sorry. Uh, it's okay. So I think uh, we're done here, and uh, I know that you guys want to discuss, but you know we have to extubate the patient and, and do some other cases and, and still do some work. <laughs> so thank you so very much. It was wonderful to uh, you know to have discussed this case with you and uh, to hear you. Unfortunately, we didn't see you, but hopefully. Um, this will not last too long now that hopefully everybody is going to be vaccinated at some point. Great to have you again and hear your voices. Controversial. Thank you to, to everyone. Uh, you have a great evening in Seoul, a good day in California, a good midday in Europe. And um, thank you to the team, of course, and everyone is here except Sebastian. He, the, the poor guy has to work. Somebody yeah. has, to, has to work. George, would you want to no, say no, something? No, 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 I'm fine. That okay. Is Thank you again for a most expert way of doing these things. Wonderful. Be well. Beautiful. Thank Great you. Very Thank, nice. you. Yeah. Thank you. Very, Bye. very beautiful. Thank yeah. you very much. Bye. Bye-bye, Becky. Okay, so well, do we, do we should make some closing comments. I think I should yeah. make a few closing comments. Uh, so this is a very good example to show that a functional MR treatment uh, can be treated by an edge to a leaflet repair. Uh, I think it's the new standard of care for optimally optimal anatomies. And if the anatomy is optimum, this should be given. The other thing that I wanted to mention in this case, particularly that uh, somebody brought about therapy of like uh, medical therapy. And you can see that this patient had a medical therapy for one year and delayed the treatment, even though she was told <clears throat> to have this therapy a long time ago. And if you look at the new three-year data in coaptids, it came out in Jack, Michael Max, the first author. It actually shows you that, that even the crossover patients at two years actually started to show benefit compared to the control arm, suggesting that even if you delay the treatment, they still will have a benefit in reduction of MR. Going to the position that you said, uh, Samir, that treatment of functional MR actually makes a difference. And uh, so you, uh, this is a, a very important point that actually came up with Quapt. And uh, with that, but, I also uh, I'd like to make Simon, some Simon, can I just, can I just, uh, can I just yes. ask about this? I mean, on the other hand, we discussed why is, was there a difference between the co op trials and the mitral FR trial? And, and probably one of the reasons was the patient in, in the French study was too sick. No, I, and, I, yeah, but, but, I'm but, not but again, so convinced about that part. I'm more but, convinced that the MR, the MR severity at baseline was not that severe. No. If you look at all their criteria, it, you know, we've talked about this proportion, disproportion. I think the biggest thing is like, to me, is MR. If you don't have functional MR and you treat it, you're not going to get a benefit. If you take a 40% LED lesion and you put a stent in it, it doesn't make a difference. So there is a I threshold. The other th paper, which I still haven't yet got accepted yet, is that we've shown that if you reduce MR to two plus or less, not one, two plus, by even by GDMT or by mitrocape, there is no difference in outcomes. That means the patients still do well, whether you did it by medical therapy or by the clip. So I think there's potentially a threshold that if you are two plus or less, then uh, it doesn't really make a difference whether you do a clip or anything. Else. So you I know, think there is a. Yes, I, I, but the I point I want to raise is that you should probably not wait too long before this. And I think the next interesting trial could be to see bring the clip forward in the treatment algorithm. Don't don't wait until you have tried every single drug on the on the shelf and uh, but but maybe do it early on. And that was just a comment that you can do it later on. Yes, you can do it later on, but that's not the same as you should wait. Maybe you should. Maybe you should do this therapy early on. I mean, yeah, one I mean, of the other uh, differences with, uh, with Mitra FAR is that the physicians were allowed to continue optimal, uh, optimizing medical therapy, um, which was not really done. Uh, you know, the optimization of medical therapy was done before entry into the trial for COACT. Um, and I think that the power of medical therapy is, as Seibel has already implied, uh, extraordinary. 
And it's possible that uh, the curves are the same because at some point the medical therapy um, and there were many more patients on Entresto in the French study. And I mean, other drugs that we didn't have when we entered uh, first started uh, COAP. There, there's so few patients on Entresto in COAP that we couldn't do a study on Entresto in COAP. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, you know, I think that uh, there, there's so many differences, but what we now know from multiple studies is it's probably not all about proportionate and disproportionate. Um, that when each of the trials looked mm-hmm. at the other trials criteria and found sub groups of their patients that match those criteria, yeah. they still could not find a difference um, between um, the outcomes in mitral FR, um, or they could not mimic the, the you know, no difference in COAT. So there's something else going on and it, and it may be all about optimization of therapy. Yeah, I therapy. mean, B- B- Becky, in real life, it's okay to optimize continuously, but in order yeah. to prove a point in the study, uh, you know, as a um, a problem, it was important to yeah. optimize them before. In real life, it's okay to optimize continuously. And by the way, um, it is not true that in GD in in in, uh, in Quack that the people were not allowed to. Of course, they were allowed to to yeah. do anything no, they wanted. But they, were, they, but were they didn't. They, they couldn't do anymore to... because they were maximized. Yeah. No, that's very true. That's that right? there are limitations to guideline therapy namely renal function, blood pressure, all those things. Right. Yeah. Um, in in fact, the there was an increase of beta blocker usage. The beta blocker dose went up on the, GD, on the mitral clip arm. And this is because the blood pressures went up. So they actually could go even higher. So I think uh, the ther- there was, and of course, then there's a lot of uniformity. You know, having a single core lab, having a single eligibility committee, which decided all the patients was very, very important. When you have multiple sites and each of them doing different things, you may not come up with homogeneous results, right? Chief, if you have to have homogeneous results, it is important to have a central committee so that each of the groups look equal. Then I they may have shown a benefit. Just and a by the way, uh, if you see their two-year data, the Mitre France, it's not that bad. It actually shows a separation of the heart failure admissions the cumulative heart failure admissions was actually less in the mitral clip arm compared to GDMT. So I, I feel that both the studies are complementary and no matter how you look at it, it's, it's clear cut. And if you did a meta-analysis and put them together, the, the, it's, it's still positive in favor of uh, a clip therapy. Or for patients who are, again, Becky has said, optimized on GDMT. As you said, do you, they all have to be proper to medical therapy. I mean, I had a patient the other day who came in with severe functional MR and I measured his blood. He was on Corec 3.25 daily and his blood pressure was 160 by 90. So he said, I've come for a clip. I said, no, 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 you need a good doctor. You don't need a good clip. So I said, you first have to be properly treated. And then he came back three months later and his MR was mild. So, I mean, that's of course important, right? But I, I can I just come back to the point about the... Uh, the safety yes, of the device, because uh, I, I can't agree more that now that we have so much experience, regardless of the trials, the observation on the ground that this procedure has gotten faster and faster. I think they could have done skin to skin and still have time to have a great discussion just now. And we could have finished up, extubated a patient and had this discussion there and then. So it's becoming faster, safer, and we're achieving much, much better results. So I do agree that this uh, procedure for patients previously not surgically operable at this age. It's, it's been terrific. And uh, the data does show it. And uh, like what Lars said, we might want to move this further in front after just three months of optimized medical therapy. And uh, I, we're very happy to have it in Asia. The point about throwing more device is that in reimbursed uh, uh, societies like America and Germany maybe, but I think a clip is enough for tons of these patients without uh, uh, on top of just medical therapy. So this G4 system is also great with all the other illustrations. I think it's helped the procedure become safer and uh, faster actually. So um, I, I think it's evolving and it is the device to match for mitral repair, I think at the moment. Yeah. And they did use the independent gripper function in this case. 
right? Yeah. And great closing comments. Uh, so I think uh, thank you again. Uh, thanks uh, everybody from the panel. And uh, if uh, everybody is okay, we close the session. Thank you. See you guys. Thank you. Thank you.